Hi, and welcome to our Counselor Survival Tips walkthrough. This is a guide to help you better escape from the murderous summer camp in Friday the 13th, the game. We will be using Jenny Myers in a lone wolf style approach. The setting will be Pakanak Lodge and our Jason will be part eight from Jason Takes Manhattan. Right, let's get started. As soon as you spawn, go directly to the nearest cabin. On entering, immediately close and barricade the door. This will ensure that Jason doesn't simply walk into the room or smash through it in just a couple of swings. Grab a weapon and begin your search for useful items in the many drawers scattered about the cabin. Be thorough in your search as you don't want to miss anything. As you can see, we have found a walkie-talkie. This item can be used to communicate with other alike equipped counselors across the entirety of the map. This will enable you to inform each other of the items you may have in your possession that can be of benefit to the entire team. Do keep in mind that Jason can hear your cross chatter if he is within your vicinity. We have now found a Medi spray. We can hold three such items on our person at a time. This will be useful to replenish health and stamina after attaining injuries from climbing through broken windows, on stepping into traps, or attaining damage from Jason's attacks. This cabin just so happens to have a CB radio for which you can call for help. Not only will you earn 50 experience points for using this, but it will also bring a player who has recently escaped or fallen victim to Jason back into the game as Tommy Jarvis. His presence could be immensely useful to the team in the latter stages of the game. On leaving the cabin, proceed to the next and loot its contents in much the same manner as you had the first. As before, barricade the door. We have found the fuse to the phone line. This is the most important item in the game. After fitting the fuse and phoning the cops, the police will arrive at one of the exits of the camp to aid your escape five minutes after making the call. It is the only method that can potentially allow all of the counselors to vacate the camp safely. However, as you can see, Jenny doesn't have a very good repair stat it would be probably best to have a better skilled counselor make the repair. But we can pass the fuse on to a more able character when we find one. Firecrackers. These can be thrown behind you in order to distract Jason if he is right on your tail. A good item to have. Here we see Brandon, however his abilities to fit the fuse are worse than ours, but more concerning are his injuries, which would suggest that Jason is nearby. Time to leave the cabin. Keep an eye on your mini-map as you sprint to safety. This will give you a good sense of direction and possibly alert you to Jason's proximity. I would also highly suggest that you equip the Nerves of Steel as one of your three perks. You don't want to have your sense of direction impaired when you run into Jason and at some point in the game you will be running from the adept serial killer. One of Jenny's strengths is her composure. This means she doesn't scare easily and the more fearful you are the easier it is for Jason to find you. Jenny's composure is the highest of any counselor but this doesn't mean that she can rely on this stat. Jason's abilities grow in strength and range over time and you won't be able to simply hide your way through the 20 minutes. The best strategy for survival is by finding a means to escape, so always keep that in mind. Not all cabins contain items that you require, so keep moving from cabin to cabin until you attain the items you and your team require. We have now found a map. This not only gives you an overview of the entire site, 
but also shows you the location of each counselor and of any dropped items. You can equip a preparedness perk to start the game with a map, and I would suggest that you do so if you are new to the game. The battery. Though we might not be able to fit this item as well as other counselors, it doesn't mean that we can't assist them by bringing it closer. So we'll drop this off by one of the cars as we look for the phone fuse box on our way to the lodge. The fuse box is sometimes located on the side of the house or on the back, but in this case it is neither. We need to find it and as it is not here and the main house is often a focal point for Jason and other counselors, we'll leave the area to give ourselves some distance. We also need a weapon and it would be good to find a pocket knife, which I believe to be the most useful item a counselor can have in their inventory. The pocket knife can be used to disarm traps or instantly free yourself from Jason's grasp. Even though Jenny has a good luck stat and great composure, if Jason gets hold of her, nine times out of ten, it's game over. And lo and behold, we found a pocket knife. Once we find the fuse box, we'll be able to disarm the trap Jason has put in front of it, and trust me, a good Jason player will always do so. Even though that we have the items we need, it is always a good idea to inspect every drawer. You never know what you might need later and could come back for, and in our case, we won't be carrying any Medispray. Good stuff! We now have a flare gun. The flare gun is a great weapon to have as its effects will instantly stun an advancing Jason and you can do this from range. Jenny is not a good combatant and going toe to toe with Jason should only ever be done as a last resort. Coming across cabins with locked doors is a good sign that other counselors have already looted them. As we already have the items we need, we'll give these cabins a miss, only checking the outsides of them as we pass in order to ensure they don't have the fuse box. Always jog when traveling about in the open. It may be quicker to get from cabin to cabin by sprinting, but you will lose precious stamina and you will also create noise which will alert Jason to your presence. The direct route is not always the best route. If you see Jason on the minimap, go to a neighboring cabin first and wait for him to move on. Jason has his own agenda and your fellow counselors will be at the forefront of his concern, especially if they are attempting to fix a car or trying to start it. Jason appears to be in the area, so we'll run to this cabin to gain some respite and cover. We'll hop through this window. It's broke. I think he may have thrown a knife. Well, at least the door is fortified. He must be really close. 
We'd better get out of here as quick as we can. And here he is. He's got us, but we have a pocket knife to break his grasp. We're going to need to sprint and put some distance between ourselves and Jason. We'll duck into the second cabin in hopes of shaking him and gaining a moment to regain some stamina. It also pays to know the strengths and weaknesses of the Jason you're playing against. This Jason can break through doors better than others, but is unable to run, so we should be able to lose him for a short time. We could use another pocket knife, and sure enough, we found another one. We've been very lucky to have found two, and it would appear that Jason is busy with other counselors, so I think we'll recommence with our quest to find the fuse box. And we found it. It is trapped as we suspected, but now we have a pocket knife, we'll crouch down and disarm it. Tommy is here, and is doing likewise. See, I told you he'd come in handy later in the game. Tommy is much better at repairing the phone box than I am, so we'll drop the fuse and head into the cabin to make the call. We're at the phone. He's fixed it. Now to ring the police. The police will be arriving at the camp in five minutes, so it's very important to get out of the cabin before Jason arrives to contend with us. And here he is. Neither of us have a pocket knife, but Tommy has a gun and successfully shoots Jason. He'll be out for a time, but not long, so we'd better sprint out of here before he recuperates. Tommy and I have split up, so Jason now has to choose one of us to target. And he's chosen me. We need to get to a cabin. We need to weave side to side so he can't grab us, as we can no longer sprint and don't have a chance to rest to gain stamina. We need to get some distance, so now is the time to use those firecrackers. We'll drop them behind us to distract him and climb through the window. We're safely in the cabin and the door is barricaded. We'll grab a weapon and regain some stamina so we can leg it out of here at the soonest opportunity. He won't give up easily, but we're also quite close to those three cabins at the north end of the camp. We'll run for it and get to the one that had all the spare stuff we found earlier, including some firecrackers. We're not likely to find another pocket knife, so they'll come in real handy. We'll take cover in this first cabin to gain a moment of respite. It is much safer to take a rest indoors than it is outside. Jason's shift ability does not allow him to gain entry through the windows, and both doors are locked. If we stop to rest before entering the cabin, Jason could grab us, and with no pocket knife, he'd kill us for sure. I think we're good to go, so we'll go to the next cabin to collect our stuff. And it's still here. We have another Medispray, and of course, the Firecrackers. 
We're loaded up and ready to make our escape. We just have to wait for the police to arrive. We'll go back to the previous cabin and wait there as it is equal distant between the two ends of the main road. We don't know which end the police will be waiting at, so once they arrive, we want to be able to get to them as quick as possible. Keep the item you are most likely to use highlighted in your inventory. I've left mine on the firecrackers, as we are not in desperate need of the medispray at the moment. While we wait, I will have a look about the cabin to see if it harbours a bear trap. It would be good to set one at the door. Should Jason arrive, it would give us a little bit extra security and time to make our escape. It also pays to look at your map periodically to check on the progress of the other counsellors, and it would seem that at least one of them has escaped in the car thanks to the battery we left for them earlier. Now we simply wait for the time to expire before leaving the cabin and heading for the exit. If Jason does come before the police arrive, we'll climb out the window and leg it to another cabin to kill more time until we can break for safety. The police have arrived, so we'll exit the cabin and make our way towards them. We'll jog rather than sprint so that Jason won't know our exact location or see us coming should he be standing in our way. there is a distinct possibility that he will be waiting for us at the exit and it would appear that that is exactly what he is doing. We have some firecrackers but we don't have a pocket knife or a flare gun to stun him. We're going to have to juke him, however if he gets us we're dead. Another player is working their way towards us. We'll slow up so that Jason has two targets to contend with and hopefully we'll both be able to escape. Try and keep obstacles between yourself and Jason on the way to the exit. Jason's shift ability is formidable but it can't shift through rocks, trees or barriers. The other counsellor is Tommy, and Jason is ready and waiting. Neither of us have a pocket knife, but Tommy's speed and stamina is better than ours. Tommy is going for it, so we'll run for the barrier to put something between us and Jason. I'll drop firecrackers and run to the exit. And there you have it. We've escaped from Jason and Pakanak Lodge on Crystal Lake. I hope this tutorial has been of some use to you and I'll post some more helpful gameplay content in the future. Until then, take care and have a good day. Mommy. Ha, 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 ha.